and I am your host, Adrian Gold Davis, and welcome to the Momentum Boost. So if you're new here, just look around, get the lay of the land, and if you've been here before, you just relax and get into it with me. If you're having any technical problems, which can happen, just do this. Just click the little hand icon on the lower right-hand side of the chat box, and you just choose the relevant icon that you need. You can also ask our guest a question anytime you want just by clicking the question mark, which you'll find in the lower left-hand side of your screen of the chat box. But just remember that all the questions are visible to everybody. So if you're hoping for anonymity or you are hoping to keep it, you know, between you and, 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 the, and the speaker, just remember that you click the little hand icon and that gives you some privacy. So in this episode, Momentum's founding director, the incredible Lori Palatnik, is joining us. And we're going to have a conversation framing Rosh Hashanah and about the book of life, how to find our place within its pages. And together, we're going to try and plan to clarify our goals. It's so important to look at our past wrongs and write them and envision a future that will be beautiful and productive and brighter for all of us. So for those of you who may not know, Lori Palatnik is a world-renowned Jewish educator. She's a speaker. She's a media personality. She's an author. And Jewish Women International included Lori as one of the 10 women to watch. And Hadassah called Lori one of the most outstanding Jewish American women of our time. And this year, Lori was selected to light the diaspora torch at the national ceremony for Israel's 72nd Independence Day. Welcome, my friend and mentor, Lori Palatnik. Adrian, do you see me? I'm coming from Jerusalem. I love you. Love you too, Adrian. Do you hear me okay? Is the sound I okay? Can... Well, I hear you I... in Toronto. Okay, great. So I'm coming from Jerusalem. The birds are singing and I miss you and, Jeru and Israel misses you very, very much. All right, everybody. So it's the beginning of a new year. Shana Tova. Stephen Covey in his work of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of his habits is begin with the end in mind. And when he says begin with the end in mind, he's actually talking about the end to end. That means how do you want people to remember you in your life. Nobody wants the rabbi to say at their funeral, she was okay. He was pretty darn average. No, everybody wants the rabbi to say, she was great. He was awesome. And this is why. How do we get there? It takes a lot of work. And every year we have an opportunity to begin again now. Rosh Hashanah is our day of judgment. Doesn't sound like fun, does it? Why are we so happy if it's our day of judgment? Shana Tova, Happy New Year. Why are we happy? Because we do have a chance to begin again. And the fact that God judges us means that my life counts. My choices matter. The difference between January 1st and Rosh Hashanah is accountability. On January 1st, oh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to be learn a language, be nicer to my kids. One year rolls along, you didn't do any of it. So what do you do? Happy New Year. We'll try again. Rosh Hashanah, you promised the same things. You didn't do any of it. What do you have to do? You have to go before God and you have to account. And accountability is good. Accountability is great. A life with no accountability. Nobody cares if you come, you go, you make dinner, you don't make dinner, you make the sale, you don't make the sale, you show up, you don't show up. Nobody cares. The fact that God judges us means somebody cares. My life matters. My choices matter. But everybody makes mistakes. Before we walk into Rosh Hashanah, and you still have about three and a half weeks before, before that day, Actually, tonight is Rosh Chodesh Elo. So we have about four weeks now before we hit Rosh Hashanah. Elo, the Jewish month. The acronym our rabbis say is Ani Ladodi Vadodi Li. I am to my beloved as my beloved is to me. This is coming back to your relationship with God. The Almighty knows we made mistakes. How do you want your kids to feel when they make mistakes? You want it to label them? You want it to beat themselves up? You want it to like weigh them down? No. 
you made a mistake, recognize you made the mistake, make good, learn from it, and go on and be a better person. This process is called tshuva. The word tshuva does not mean repent. The word tshuva means to return. You're returning to the good person you know you are. You got off track this year. There are four steps to tshuva. And we're gonna go through those four steps. And it's gonna be easy to remember, why? Because it comes with an acronym. The acronym is SRVP. How can you remember the acronym? Well, switch the first two letters. So now it's SRVP. Okay, so switch the first two letters of RSVP. How do you remember the acronym? You remember RSVP, Responde si vous play. God's giving you an invitation to change. So if you can remember the invitation, RSVP, switch the first two letters, SRVP, those are the steps of Chuva. This is from Maimonides, the Ramba from the 12th century. Let's do the first one first, S. S is stop. No matter how long you've been making a mistake in any aspect of your life, you really can begin again now. As soon as this webinar is over, you can stop, whether it's a bad habit, whether it's the, uh, losing your temper, whether it is, an, you can stop now. So ask, stop. R, R is regret, not guilt. Guilt is self-wallowing, guilt is paralyzing. That, even though North American Jewry is, is the foundation of it is, is Jewish guilt, there's actually no Jewish concept of guilt. There's no Torah idea of guilt. We don't, guilt, it, regret. Regret means feel the pain of your mistake so that you won't make it again. Again, this is not to beat yourself up, but if you don't feel the pain, you're going to do it again. Imagine one of your kids takes a toy truck and smashes over the other kid's head. So you tell the perpetrator, say you're sorry. And so what does he say? Sorry. Well, brought tears to my eyes. Is it going to happen again? You betcha. You can't go before God at Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and say, sorry, that wasn't a real sorry. You have to feel the pain of it. That's the regret. V. V is verbalize. If you've made the mistake, if it's a mistake between you and, and God, you just say it out to God in your own words. You don't have to be in a synagogue. It doesn't have to be in Hebrew. Just between you and God, at least in an audible whisper, that you blew it. And this is, how, this is what you did. And you're sorry. If it's between you and another person, you can't go to God and ask for forgiveness until you've gone to that person first. This is the time of year to reach out to people and to ask for forgiveness. And what's harder than saying, please forgive me? Sometimes harder than that is saying, I forgive. And this is the time of year to be forgiving. So V is verbalize. Go to, another, go to somebody who you wronged, ask for forgiveness, and then go to God and ask God's forgiveness. Last one, P is plan. How am I gonna make sure it doesn't happen again? What's your plan? So to begin again now, we also are going to look at this year and in terms of begin with the end in mind, I want you to be thinking now, where do I wanna be at this time next year in the most important aspects of my life? And we're going to make a plan. I started doing this a few years ago. This is called cheshbon nefesh, a spiritual accounting. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? And what's my plan for the next year? And our sages say, this is really the key to, to realizing your potential, is to make this accounting. You know, you have a financial year, uh, year end. This is your spiritual year end. Well, what's your plan going forward? Imagine I'm going to start a business, okay? I'm going to um, sell umbrellas, okay? I'm going to sell umbrellas. So I uh, go to a bank manager and I'm going to ask for a small business loan. So what's the first thing the bank manager is going to ask me? Where's your business plan? I go, oh, I'm, I'm going to make umbrellas, sell them. I'll give you back your money. Everybody makes money. It's all good. Trust me. Are you getting the loan? You're not getting a dollar. What's the number one thing that everybody, everybody is going to ask for this Rosh Hashanah? Write me in the book of life. What are we going to ask for? More time. We're going to beg God, give me another year. And what's God asking in return? 
what are you going to do with it? God can't get you there unless you know where you want to go. Why would he bring in experts and opportunities and resources if you don't even know where you're going? Where are you going in your marriage? Where are you going spiritually? Where are you going in your physical fitness? Where are you going? So we're going to get practical. Rabbi Leib Kellerman says, if it's not practical, it's not Torah. So we're going to get practical. So I actually made for you, uh, this is what I do every year, but people start asking me. So I, we made up a packet, your guide to landing in the book of life. If you were, if you didn't see it in the waiting room, if you look at your top left, in the top left corner of your screen, you'll see that you'll be able to download it. Okay. And uh, there it is. Thank you very much. You can download it. And this is a packet. I use it. I have to tell you last night I downloaded it in order to show you and my husband took it. My husband, the rabbi. So he's been doing this every year as well. And this has really been transformational, really transformational. So what we do is, and I'm going to show you. So in the, I broke it up into different areas of your life. So Tal, if you can just uh, there. So here's professionally, for example, you see, what is my goal? What are my professional goals? What are the action steps towards achieving that goal? And how am I going to hold myself accountable? There's another area. Spiritually, right? where, where, where are my spiritual goals? What is it? Where do I want to increase in my spiritual observance or my relationship with God? What are my goals? What are the action steps? And how can I hold myself accountable? Relationships. This is really something. So this one, I added another row for you. Every person in your life, so every person in your life, I take my nuclear family and I did it last year. And thankfully, our uh, this is my last year's sheets. And you see our family is growing, thankfully. And uh, and I really where do I want to be in every one of the key relationships? Where do I want to be in my relationship next year at this time next year? What's my goal? What are the action steps and how do I hold myself accountable? Next, my financial health. I think this is the last one. Okay, where do you want to be financially? Now you can add any sheets that you want, but I, these are the key areas that I've, I've, I've taken. You can also do your, your physical health, okay, like fitness, like there's many areas that you can do. Now, I'm going to need, I'm going, I, I'm going to volunteer from the audience and we're going to, I'm going to show you how this works. Do I have a volunteer from the audience? Can anybody volunteer? Is anybody out there, any viewer, any listener? Anybody wants to volunteer? Oh, I, think, I think I have somebody. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Hello, my sister Lori. Okay, my dear Adrian. Okay, oh. so Adrian, Adrian, I gave Adrian downloaded this ahead of time. Yeah. And I asked her to pick one or two areas to do ahead of time, and we're going to talk it through. And I'm also going to do uh, do it with you. So this does give you. you a Lori. I, yeah. I, I did download it last night and I thought, I don't want to do this. This is so not me to like sit and write stuff down. I like to wing it. Don't, don't pin me down. But once I got started, you know, the goals were easy. The accountability, not so much. That's where yeah. I have to really do the work. And that's key. And I, I, I'm happy because one of the ways you can make yourself accountable is to have a partner. An accountability partner. So if you want, I'm, I would love uh, to be your accountability partner. Maybe there's certain areas that of goals that we're having. Because listen, there's certain areas also you don't want to be so to share it with so many people. But right. you and I have been the, here, there, and back, back again. So I, I'm very happy to volunteer as your accountability Are partner. Are you serious? You of course, that I'm, would be awesome. I love it. On one hand, I am so delighted. On the other hand, I'm mortified. So I, I'm not sure <laughs> which it'll turn out. So don't be so accountable, okay? Not so accountable. Don't be so exact. Okay. I'm I'm good at accountability. You're good. You're good at uh, validating. You're you're very validating. So even if right, I blow it, I don't do it. You're going to say you're doing great, Lori. You're doing great. Oh, that's why you want me. You don't want me to have you. You want to have me because everything's all good with me. No, okay, it'll be okay. So tell me, tell me what you did. Well, I did. Personally, I did professionally and I did financial health. The reason okay. is because I don't want to tell the entire world where I've screwed up in my relationships. That's between me and God and the person I messed up with. So I no, thought I'd go more objective. You that on stage. So, yeah, you don't want to do What's this What's that? Here, what did you say? On stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's different. It's just us women there. Okay. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, a guy okay. could be watching this. All right, so here we go. So let's go with professionally. So I, I printed it out and you can see I actually okay, I wrote... Okay, I want to remind yeah. you that... Nobody should be making their plan until they do tshuva first. We're allowing you. Go, we're going to skip over it for the for the sake of this example. Of but if you don't like, if you don't clear up your mistakes, don't think you're going on to success in any plan. 
because you 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 need to clean clear the decks first. Got it? Okay, but you're going to have to help me figure out how that's going to work um, in terms of professionally, because some of the things I need to do professionally for next year are a result of what I can't do right now. It's not okay. so much I made them. Okay, so let's just let's just go through it. All right. Well, that's so the first one for me is going to be to become more literate, um, professionally literate with computer. I have to say that I am a dinosaur technologically. And, you know, I always find it charming. Oh, what a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's not charming. <laughs> so it's not charming to other people. It's not charming when my coworkers have to send me things in Google because it's the only thing I can open. And there's this platform called Asana that we use at work, which is a... A, like a project management system, I am telling you, it's in Greek for me. So I know it's, it's that's very hard. my first thing is I want to be part of the team. So my action steps, you want to hear those? Yeah, let me hear you. Okay, so I am going to because I need to do things in person. Um, I you know just and trying to learn and be tutored over the uh, internet doesn't work for me. I'm going to hire you know a genius an Apple genius or somebody who's maybe a 12 year old boy, I don't know who, and I am going to learn how to maximize my computer and that program. Very good, excellent, excellent. So um, I, I remember when I, I I first got married and a friend of mine said, you know, you have to start making challah, okay? It's a mitzvah, you should make challah. I go, no, it's too long, too many steps, things are rising, I only make small, short recipes. No, 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 no. So she came over to my house, uh, my friend Miura, you know her. Miura mm -hmm. came to my house with all the ingredients. She made challah in front of me. I go, I can do that. So I think that we're also, I'm, I'm like that. I'm like with you. If some people just show me, I can do it. Okay, Lori, you know that I'm Lori Light. So the truth is, I mean, there's Lori Palatnik and then there's Adrian Gold, Lori Light. So there oh, you are. No, you're, Adrian, Adrian. You're, Uber, you're Uber Adrian yourself. Okay, no, so, no. so how are you going to hold yourself accountable? Okay, so this was an easy one. This one yeah. I could be accountable for. Because while I am computer illiterate, there's only one thing in the world I am more than that. And that is profoundly cheap. <laughs> I'm like that too. If you pay for it, we're going to do it. You're not going to waste your money. Exactly. So I am going to pay in advance whoever it is I hire. And I'm going Very to pay a little more than I can afford so that it has value for me. I mean, if I pay 50 wow. bucks, I'll go, okay, it's like I went out for dinner and, you know, it's gone the next day anyway. So I am going to pay. I'm cheaper than you. If I pay 50 bucks, I'm going to get my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, $50. Yeah, you don't live in Toronto. Uh, $50, that's like breakfast. So, okay, uh -huh. so I'm going, to, I'm going to do that. So that's one of the things professionally. So is that clear enough the way I did the steps? Very good. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Um, I think that I'm going to suggest to you just because right. we do work together that part of your accountability is that you're going to let your team know that you're doing this and that your goal is by whatever date it is that you are now going to go solo on asana and people don't have to do that look why are you resisting because just wanting to start doesn't god say open for me an opening of the <laughs> eye of an eagle and then he'll broaden it for me i just have to get no started. i i have I had a religious dentist in Toronto and he asked me yeah. if I, if I flossed and I go, no, you know, no, maybe like, you know, but it's not all or nothing. He goes, Judaism is not all or nothing. But dental hygiene is all or nothing. Gum disease is all or nothing. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. You're doing great. Okay. Let's, let's get all over right, to just a second. second. I'll be accountable okay. to you, but you have to learn okay. how to use Asana. And I'll hold you accountable. You okay. know why? I also need to learn Asana. I'm also yes. been like you because they keep saying they're going to train you, they're going to train you. So we will try to be proficient together. Maybe we'll have a goal that by Hanukkah, yeah, by Hanukkah, we will be able to uh, handle Asana or not our own. Okay, Pesach, Pesach, not not Hanukkah. No, Pesach. Oh. Pesach, please, Pesach. Pesach. The whole world could be different by Pesach. Okay, let's go to financial. You said you did financial. Yeah, I did do financial as well. Okay, you want to give me a financial? You want me to give you one of mine? I, whatever you like. What do you feel like? Yeah, they've heard enough of me. Let's hear a little bit of you and then I'll give you something. Okay, so listen, I also did a professional one that was interesting, but I think I'll talk to you offline about it because it's a little okay. bit, uh, it's a very, it's, it's, it's a little bit more, more big picture. Okay. Um, but in my relationships and that this is the most, this is the, listen, listen if we, if we're great pro professionally, we're great financially, but we blow our relationships, what the heck did we do? So um, I have, uh, 
So we, ha I have three of my kids are married. So three of them have, I now have three new people in my family. Okay. I love all of them. They're amazing. And I have thank thankfully a wonderful relationship with my daughter-in-law, which is Neely's daughter. And she's fantastic. And she's also, she's local in Jerusalem and we're both girls. We're both women. So like we share pictures and we can like, there's a natural connection with my son-in-laws who I love their dolls. I, it's it's a new relationship and because they're guys and because they're like they're, it's not as natural so my husband has been learning with them he's really getting to know them and one of them he learns with every day and they really have that natural connection so one of my goals is to create just a, a more relaxed and natural and positive relationship we don't have a negative relationship they're great but hopefully they think i'm great too but i don't have an ongoing relationship so often I'll talk to my girls, my daughters who are married to them. I'll say, oh, please send my love to, you know, fill in the blank. Right. So I would like to have that kind of relationship. And I need, I see that I need to really, I have to invest in it. So my goal is to have, a, you know, a more natural, positive, ongoing relationship. So my action step, I thought, I'm not going to reach for something too great, but at least once a week to WhatsApp them or have some sort or talk to them like once a week to have some sort of even like a quick communication or a funny thing that I'll send them just to start that kind of relationship. Does that sound doable? Does that sound good? That sounds tremendous. Tremendous. You know what I'm thinking you could do? You should send wow. baby baby pictures or of their wife when they were little. Here, thought you would like to see oh, this. Oh, they would love that. Yeah. Sometimes I do. I have a group family thing, and sometimes I'll, I'll post that if I come across a picture. But yeah, that would be great. That's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Now, how will I hold myself accountable? I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Yeah. Um, you should speak to your son-in-law and say. Um, I feel like I'm missing out on knowing you as well as I could, but I'm not going to push you to like be on a phone call with your mother-in-law, which is like, you know, a nightmare for most people anyway, not, not because of you, you're wonderful. So I'm going to try and send you a family picture or a quote or something that speaks to me, just to you, not to my daughter, just to you once a week. And that way you'll know that I'm thinking about you. If you don't feel like answering, that's fine, but you'll know that you're in my heart. What do you think of that? You tell them. Good, but what what what's my accountability? I've told them, but if I don't do it, they're not going to say like, "Hey, where you been?" Or maybe I'll say like, you know, if you don't hear from me, like, let me know. Or I don't know. That's not going to happen. I know you can go. You can tell your daughter to be accountable. She should ask him to see whatever it was that you sent that week. What did my mom oh, so say? That, that, that might be good. That might work. Now I want you to know. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what the goal was. I'm looking at last year's. And it, again, if you do this and you don't look at it until era of Rosh Hashanah, then like the, when your rolls along, that's not good. Right. So ideally, ideally, you need to be looking at it once a month. You can pick the Jewish head of the month, Rosh Chodesh, or you could be, you, which is a good time to do a little bit of Cheshbon and Nefesh accounting. But you could also, um, you could use the first of the month, whatever it is. Now, Pesach falls halfway between Yom Kippur and Yom Kippur. And Pesach's a really good time to really take a look at your plan and how am I doing? Are you a little bit off? Everybody goes off. What's wrong with being a little bit off? Well, if the if the space shuttle go, takes off and it's a little bit off, it's going to miss the solar system. You right. want to catch them before they go off. So uh, so you should be reviewing them and you might want to update them depending on how things are going, what's happening. I'm sorry for my bells. Okay, so I was looking at last year, okay, uh, and it says that I'm not going to tell you the goal, but it was just a goal, a positive goal for me and my husband, for in my relationship with my husband. So what was my action step? Be home more. <laughs> so the Almighty brought a world pandemic, and I have been home every day for the last six months, just the two of us. Okay, I Crazy. knew it was your fault. I had no one to blame, but now really? me. Clearly. Are you serious? Do you feel yeah, like I'm that serious. was a gift? Like, do, in no, retrospect. Listen. Everything, every challenge has the opportunity and there's a blessing within it. And you sometimes it's harder to see, but I've seen loud and clear, I don't know about you, the opportunities this year. So now that we're looking back at 2020, you're thinking like, so I wanna share something that's kind of heavy, but it's also very, very exciting. Please. Everything that happened to us this past year was decided last Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. You hear? I mean, I've so heard that you're fine. Where you want to, so when, where do you want to be at this time next year? It means going into Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. It's not just like, Shana Tova, Happy New Year, and like, sorry, sorry, sorry. The work that you do, based on the work, based on, 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 on really 
making sure that the Almighty forgives your mistakes, that you forgive yourself, that you forgive other people, because sometimes we forgive other people, but we don't forgive ourselves. Awesome. This is the time of to get into forgiveness, to connect to the Almighty, and to plan where do I want to be in the most important relations of my life next year? Because again, everything's going to be decided. This Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, the book of your life, it says, is open on Rosh Hashanah and closed and sealed on Yom Kippur. We're taught so that anybody, anybody who's very, very righteous is is judged and sealed on Rosh Hashanah, and anybody who's very, very wicked is judged and sealed on Rosh Hashanah. But anybody, but everybody else, you have told Yom Kippur, okay? Anybody between very, very righteous and very, very wicked, that's us, okay? We have between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So Rosh Hashanah is like your day in court, Yom Kippur, appeals court. Oh, that's really well put. Okay, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, I've learned that, that your finances are set for the year at Rosh Hashanah. That I knew. But when you say to be written in the book of life, we're not talking literal physical life, are we? We're talking metaphoric life. We're talking like if you read if you the prayers at Yom Kippur, it says we pass before God like sheep who and he decides who will live and who will die. This is the real deal. There are people who thought everybody just assumes like, oh, yeah, yeah next year. Yeah. The Talmud asks, when's the best day to do tshuva? When's the best day to right. clear up your mistakes? The answer, the, the day, day before you die. die. And since we never know when that's going to be, and if 2020 taught us nothing else but that we have no idea who's going to live and who's going to die and what's, what life has in store, it means that not only you should live for each day, but that you should, again, what you, if you want more time, this is a very cool thing. Mm. A great Robertson taught me that you should always be in the middle of a very important project, meaningful project, and it could be a relationship, it could be for the Jewish people, in the middle of something before going into Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Why? Because right. you're saying to the Almighty, of course you have to give me more time. Look what I'm doing. You know what, Laurie, something just occurred to me, this is probably ridiculous, but I feel like I have to say it. Did you ever notice that, you know, there are a lot of people pass away just before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? Do you think it's because their year, they got the year, but only till the end of the year? Is that an idea? And everybody's, everybody's, the Almighty decides everything, life and death. And we, but again, it's, it's, we have free will. It's based on our choices. And, and death is not a punishment. It's part of life. We are assigned a certain amount of time. But you see in, in Tanakh, in, in the Torah, God can add years and take away years based on our choices. So let's right. make good choices. This was so powerful for me. And, and not just because listening to you is always mind-blowing for me, but because doing this, because we were going to talk today, forced me to actually sit down and do the work. I'm a real wing it person. And writing it, even writing is so novel for me. I'm so used to typing now, you know, my thumbs and my fingers. Writing it just opened a whole other neuropathway too. So I thank you. I always thank you. Like for everything you give and everything you are, you lit that torch, but girl, you are the torch. You truly, oh, really love are. You, You're and, the best. And I hope both of us are sealed for another year of life. Amen. Amen. We'll be able we'll be able to see each other soon. Thank you, my love. Thank you so much. Wow.